looks like I may be going in. Huh. Well, I saw someplace about this LTD broadband. Yeah. Is that an option that would be better? After a while. I think Mar was talking about using that as a service. So. so yeah, there's a different internet services, but I know for us this was the one that. Okay, this was the only choice we had. Yeah. I have on again, off again service with mine too, and I, as annoying, but. At home, I'm pretty good. Okay, I'm good. I, My family isn't. I grew up in an era where we didn't have such a service, or we had this yes. to connect it. Yeah, and I, and I kind of started when Annalie was in Ames to do that kind of stuff because I yeah. could be connected every every evening. I could talk to her, how you, how's your day, checking on, being a yeah. hovering mother, which is a terrible thing to admit. But yeah, no, we didn't. Yeah, I know. I still remember we didn't have internet. We didn't it, when I was in college. Computers were something we had to go down to the computer lab to use still, and, and it was just a kid. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't until after I graduated I got my first computer. You get in your 60s and you did typing and, and I didn't do typing because I was on a different level with uh, with mathematics yeah. and physics and such, but yeah. but I still so. did one year of typing. I think yeah. almost everybody oh. does in yeah. junior we, high. Yeah, we didn't have, yeah. Hi, everybody. We're talking about the wonders <laughs> of computers and the internet now. Well, we should so, start Bible study. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't have to take typing because I took computer programming, which means I still can't type, which drives my wife nuts. So, but thank you for joining us. Um, getting excited. We're in the fifth Sunday of Lent. This is our last regular Sunday before we enter into Holy or yeah Holy Week because the next Sunday will be Palm Sunday. So we'll see where things go from there. And it's a beautiful day out here in Walnut Grove. Hot, lie, lie, pants on fire. Everything looks pure and white as snow. And icy and slippery. Our sins glide away from oh, us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it makes life exciting. It does. Yeah, especially because when you have to break into your car the because of the March. ice is... Yeah, yeah, Ides of March. Yeah, when you have to break the ice around your car to open yeah. the door. Yeah. That's oh, fine. Yeah. But it's supposed to be 50s by Saturday. Yes, so. that'll be nice. We have an Easter egg hunt in Marshall. So okay. Be, yeah. Glad it'll be a little bit warmer. Okay, well, so today we're in the fifth Sunday of Lent. Um, let us begin with the prayer there. Almighty God, our Redeemer, in our weakness we have failed to be your messengers of forgiveness and hope in the world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit that we may follow your commands and proclaim your reign of love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Gospel is from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Here Judas willfully misinterprets as waste Mary's extravagant act of anointing Jesus' feet with costly perfume. Jesus recognizes that her lavish gift is both an expression of love and an anticipation of his burial. Well, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with fra the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? And he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it, she bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Yeah, an interesting scene. So on this Sunday, before the beginning of Holy Week, the appointed lessons for the day leave the Gospel of Luke and are taken from the Gospel of John. The theme shift as well as public, as well from Jesus' public ministry of teaching and healing to the preparation for his passion, suffering, and death. Jesus is in Bethany, a small village less than two miles east of Jerusalem and lying on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. Six days before the Passover at the, meet, 
at a meal in the home of Mary, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. The previous occasion, Jesus had been in Bethany was when Lazarus was raised from the dead by Jesus in John chapter 11. The very presence of Lazarus bears witness to Jesus as the resurrection and the life, as we read in John eleven twenty five. So what other stories do you recall of Mary and Martha? The one where Lazarus was raised from the dead. Uh, oh, the, where the, um, Jesus is coming and he's, um, the sisters are mad because one wants to listen to Jesus and the other one's doing all the work. So the oldest one is slaving in the kitchen, making sure everything, every, all the hospitality is done. And the youngest is sitting at the knees of Jesus. Yes. We're not putting a theme in here after talking about the prodigal son either, about the youngest and the oldest here. <laughs> yeah, There's never a lot a theme of correlations. Like that. But yep, yeah. and then um, you know, just also when Lazarus is raised with Mary and Martha going to meet Jesus on the road. And so, what would the atmosphere be like with a resurrected Lazarus present in the room? He's. I'm sure he's thinking, I've got a second chance. Yeah. And I'm thinking the sisters are saying we have our brother back. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it, nowadays it's nice to not lose a loved one, but especially back then, if you're a woman, it gives you a lot more security to have a especially male family for member. Women, you yeah. you said that too. They they were not in a, a good. I mean, they were not. They couldn't hold property. They no, had to have a man. Not as easily, yeah. But it would have been one of excitement and gratefulness, I'm assuming. Okay. Well, the reaction to this miracle of raising Lazarus is prophetic and points to what is to come. The high priest and the ruling religious council recognize the growing threat Jesus poses as stories of his miracles, miracle works spread among the people. Any uprising could bring the force of an oppressive Roman army. So the religious leaders began to plan how to put Jesus to death. Jesus' suffering and death are looming in the near future. Why was raising Lazarus seen as a threat? He was doing miracles they couldn't perform. Yeah, he was doing miracles. He had power that they couldn't that, compete, you know, with. compete with. And you know, it's really hard to say somebody who raises people from the dead is not from God. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, especially think about it, you know, how much would we want to be able to be around somebody who had that power? I mean, that he would not only be, he be charismatic, but he would have that influence of That's the word I was power and authority. Too. That, yeah. And if... Like an Elvis. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The guy that does Elvis in this show is cute. Oh, yeah. Is cute. He does a good imitation. So. Yeah, but yeah, can't it, wait. Yeah, it'd be like yeah. I have to admit, I'm I'm old enough. I had to watch all that in video. Oh, but yeah, like I never Elvis, saw it either. I... Elvis and the Beatles. You know, you see the old tapes. <laughs> that everybody wants to crowd and mm -hmm. be around them as Jesus was gathering, ga gradually getting bigger and bigger each and every day, and more and more people yeah. were surrounding we a, him. We had an old black and white TV. Dad was not very fond of of us watching that, but. Shut that off. But he, if he was out and Ed Sullivan was on, I could watch it then. But yeah. you know, and there was no re redone. No. Uh, uh, capacity. You couldn't. Right. You couldn't uh, record it. That's what oh, I that's was true, looking yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. So mm -hmm. he was getting bigger and bigger, and it was. Mm -hmm. He had the possibility to catch the attention of the Romans, mm -hmm. or even to throw out the priests. Okay. Well, in contrast, the reaction to Mary, or the reaction of Mary to the presence of Jesus, who had brought her brother back to life, is that of extravagant love. She ignores the proper customs of the day, lets her hair down, an act only a woman of ill repute would do in the presence of men other than her husband, anoints Jesus' feet with expensive perfume. The reader is told the perfume is made of pure nard, a fragrant oil from the root and hair stem of the nard plant, which grows in the mountains of northern India, and worth 300 denarii almost a year's wage. Their perfume was often used in burial preparation. So imagine the scents and scene and the fragrance in the room. What do you think the reaction of those present would be? 
But it's understandable. They're, they're thinking of the extravagance, but Mary is also thinking of her um, overwhelming, um, ha you know, she, happiness yeah. that she is now has her brother back. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, she just puts the price of her brother's life in a high mm -hmm. place by doing that. Yeah, I know. I can't can't imagine the extravagance of this. You know, you're basically blowing a year's salary to clean somebody's feet, and not only are you spending that amount of money to clean the feet, but you're actually doing it in such an intimate way of being down close by the feet, close enough that your hair can be used in the process. I'm assuming the hair's longer than mine. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that's a very close proximity to be in with somebody. Well, anytime you do your feet, you have to be close mm -hmm. to that person. Yeah. Anytime you would do any kind of care, but yeah. I know we were talking at tech study yesterday about the only people now that get down to clean somebody's feet that isn't somebody who isn't their spouse would be a nurse or a somebody at a nursing many home times. or a caregiver I've done that many times I think I've told you the story mm -hmm. about this lady from our church here who I had care for her feet she had some sores on them and, and when I was down there I asked her if she needed anything else she said would I pray with her when I was down there and mm -hmm. it's always been a real special memory that I feel God called me to be there for her. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know. When we, whenever, usually, when we try to do feet washing at church, it's more a. Uh, most people don't get excited about it. Yeah, it's just kind of like. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. You'll tell a pastor your sins, but you really don't want to show your feet. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, Mary's act of intimacy and extravagant love foreshadows Jesus' death and burial. The practicality of her action is challenged by Judas Iscariot, where practicality is not the governing rule in love. Jesus recognizes her humble expression of devotion, acknowledges the significance of what she has done. She has shown her love to the one who has given her brother life and will soon give his life for her. So how would you express your love to someone who has saved a family member's life? I guess I think it's probably in our nature to do something in return. Mm -hmm. um, you know, an act of kindness for another act of kindness. Mm -hmm. um, but this is even over and above yes. because this is saving. But yeah, you, we see it on the news all the time when somebody has saved a life where the person who was saved or their family would try track down the person who did it and offer a visible form of thanks. But oftentimes there's there there's a humbleness about that that they don't want the no. notoriety. Nope. They're just thankful to what, for be in the right them, place at the right time. It's just what you do when you're in that yeah, in that situation. They are probably looked on as a hero, but maybe they don't feel that they really were a hero. Yeah. They were just doing what mm -hmm. what you do be done. Mm -hmm. So, how do we express our love to Jesus, who has given His life for us? I think of the the God's our you know our work, God's. We're doing good works because of the love that we've had. Because he has first loved us. Yeah. We love others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that's, you know, it's, our expression is to love our neighbor, to love those around us. I know that's, yeah. Our hands, God's work. Mm hmm. Is that yeah. the, the, that's the theme for the, the LCA. The, well, like, I knew there was something close to that. Oh, yeah. Well, like tonight, our theme for the service is about relationship and being connected to one another okay. is in the body of Christ. You know, it's, 
you know, I told them at Tech Study that's probably one of the biggest things I missed during COVID was coffee hour because that's when you get to actually connect to people. And I think that's one of the ways we express our, our love to Jesus is and how I don't, we connect and I don't to even us. know if it was a fearfulness. It was just that we didn't know the answers no. and, and just trying to caution. protect everyone yeah. with caution. Um, it's one of the, you know. It's just like when you're get winter weather. It's better safe than uh, to be mm -hmm. sorry. It's, mm -hmm. it's better to be prepared. And mm -hmm. so I'm hoping our roads are good for tonight. We'll find out. Well, they're out sanding them all, yeah. so they weren't too bad. I just followed the plow at forty. Yep. Okay. Well, here we have a note. The last verse of this text: "You will always you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me." It can be problematic. Raymond Brown, in his commentary on the Gospel of John, explains that in rabbinic theology, there were two classifications of good works. Those that pertain to mercy, example, burial ritual, and those that pertain to justice, example, almsgiving, giving. The former were looked upon as more perfect than the latter. So it's not that we want to keep people poor, it's just you take care of burials and immediate family first and then you go on to helping everybody else. Because yeah, that text has been misused several times in history. You know, most anybody can use parts of the Bible that they want to look at. And, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I watched a documentary once about how people go away from the church because of the study that they've done, because there's so many contradictions that it just makes you and I I know I've said this before but for confirmation we had a pastor that just would make you irate because his answers were usually another question mm -hmm. and it was just kind of a, a way to make you think of the answer not that anyone really has the, the answer, answer. Yeah. just that you know so that's why my daughters aren't watching this. They're not <laughs> supposed to know that. Okay. Well, oh, Henry writes the story of a young couple, Della and Jim, who were very poor, but also very much in love. Each had a unique possession they treasured for Della. It was her hair, long, full, long, full, beautiful. Jim, it was a pocket watch given from his grandfather to his father to him. Christmas Eve, and all the money Della had for a gift for her beloved, it was a dollar eighty-seven, mostly in coins, but she had an idea. She went and had her hair cut off and sold it for twenty dollars. With the money, she bought a beautiful chain for Jim's watch. Jim, she anxiously waited for Jim to come home from work, not knowing how he, how he would respond to her new look. When he came in, he was in shock, not because of her hair, but because of his gift for her, a set of expensive tortoiseshell combs with jeweled edges for her hair bought with the money he was given for selling his prized possession, his family pocket watch. From a Henry, the gift of the Magi. I know Disney also has a story of that too. I've, re I've always loved that story. Yeah. So describe an example of selfless love in your life. Hallmark does a lot of those too, you know. Oh yes. They all have that well, that's same, the main theme same of Hallmark. Theme. Yep. That's that's a pretty important thing. Mm -hmm. I think probably um, as kids, I know mom always used to say that there wasn't a lot of extra money, but they always would maybe do something for the kids instead of buying a new coat or mm -hmm. something like that. So examples of selfless love all the time, but not really anything that I even maybe paid attention to as much as... Yeah. The giver. I think, yeah. Well, here at English, we have, you know, one of the more famous examples of selfless love is... It's the boots yep. and the bell. The mm -hmm. boots and pause, pause boots and the bell at church mm -hmm. from Little House on the Prairie. Mm -hmm. I think most everybody here is online has read those stories, but, but that's mm -hmm. the bell we have here at English, so... Yeah, I'm trying to debate, you know, think of it, you know, that drastic of an example. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't have any. 
usually it's much more simpler of you know avoiding well, going do, eating out. I do and, know of family members that have given um, an organ. You know, my husband's mm -hmm. cousin gave a part of his liver to uh, one of my Kotki cousins, oh, okay. which I found out with a Christmas letter because you know everything isn't like you know you know who the mm -hmm. donor is, but those are. Those are selfless mm -hmm. kind of things, but, uh, um, you know, you don't know when you're in a position that you need um, and have a health crisis that you can benefit from a new um, kidney or, or someone's uh, tragedy um, and death can help continue yeah. someone's life. Yeah, right now my brain is going blank. Um, yeah, I think the blood mobiles in town today. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, that's another simple way you can do yep. it. Very simple that you don't even realize. Sometimes you have health problems you can't give anymore. Yeah, right? that's I was sure glad that I did part. when I did. Yeah. You know. So, okay. Well, such an extravagant, such is the nature of extravagant love. It gives, even gives that which is most precious for the sake of the one loved. Mary of Bethany, in our gospel reading for today, set aside, a cult, set aside the cultural standards of the day, rolled up her sleeves, let her hair down, broke open a priceless jar of perfume, and humbly washed the feet of Jesus. The fragrance of, fragrance of selfless love permeated the room, and fragrance evokes strong memories. As the oil washed over Jesus' calloused feet, perhaps the sweet smell of the perfume reminded Mary of the fragrance of the oils used to prepare her brother Lazarus' lifeless body for burial. Perhaps the fragrance cast a certain sadness like a pall over the room, a foreshadowing of the painful things to come for Jesus and for Mary. How else could she have expressed her love for one who brought her dead brother back to life? A humble spirit, an intimate expression of devotion, the finest gift. How could she give anything less to one who taught her of God's love as she sat at his feet, whose feet she now caressed? Indeed, how can we give anything less than our best gifts to one who has given his life for us? The words of the hymn in the bleak midwinter speak this truth. It says, What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. So take time to name some things God and Christ has done for you. It'd take a lot longer than just... You know, just the daily things. There's just so many that um, come into our life. Yeah, like the sense of forgiveness, the sense of peace that you can get. You know, just overarching on how it, how it how it uh, changes the way you see the world. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes the people that he puts into our lives touch us and help us grow. I know, I know we've mentioned mm -hmm. it before, the youth gatherings we've been to opens your mind to ideas of people that um, have lived a lot more exciting life than we, but it, it just, yes. um, God puts them there for us to, to grow in our mm -hmm. faith. Different people you meet. And, and in our faith journey on here, we have examples all the time. I. I I've mentioned a lot of different people in my life through church, yeah. and I uh, guess you're just called to continue on and and be that kind of person for the rest of your life. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, well, what are some ways you can express your love for Jesus? Well, I just read the read the book. If God is love, don't be a jerk. <laughs> You know, thinking sometimes the simplest way we can do it is just don't be a jerk to people. Be nice to people. Be patient. And what is it? Patient and courteous and kind. And, I mean, it's one of the ways we can express, give thanks for God's love, react to God's love. I think of the confirmation, er, confirmation with the catechism. Look on things in the kindest manner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you need to protect yourself. Because you can be misled, yeah. but you should also try to look towards, you know, like Joe and I talked about this incident that just happened. And, you know, we, 
we both know that that there's there's it's just some need that we need to try to help mm -hmm. these people that are misled yeah and on the wrong path hopefully hopefully they can be a benefit in the society it's hard to see kids go astray or anybody mm -hmm. go astray so and I know that's one of the other fun ways to express it is you can join us at church and we can hear your beautiful everybody's beautiful singing as we sing our hymns now you know share coffee get back to a normal yes or I see we have some um, whipped cream here for this afternoon three pumpkin pies so you can come and eat pumpkin pie Berry. as a way to give thanks yes. to God and to show your love by supporting our youth okay well I think that brings us to the end of our Bible study um, today we are at English at 7 o'clock soup supper is at 530 and we'll also be at our Saviors in Dover at 530 for worship um, this Sunday yeah, I gotta look. Yeah, it's gonna be a different Sunday. We have St. Olaf will be first service again because it's not Sunday. English will be at 1030 along with the baptism of Lexi Albertson. And then we have um, nine o'clock at our Saviors. And I think Old Westbrook at nine o'clock on Saturday, we have our Lenten Bible study for partners in ministry. But thank you for joining us and uh, have a good week. Well, let's end with prayer. What wondrous love is this, so loving Jesus that you would give your life for me, mold and shape my life in this love, that I might be a living expression of your love in everything I say and do. Amen. Amen. If you want to dig deeper, you can go into John chapter 11, verses 1 through 44, which is the raising of Lazarus. And the last word, take time this week to reflect on what God has done for you. Offer a prayer of thanks. Well, God be with you. And thank you.